Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Disco Elysium. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today in this lovely place. We're inside a chimney, an old chimney, um, and the furnace that basically was there. It's kind of a weird thing, all things considered, because this is the chimney now. What was here that required a, a full room-wide chimney that now only requires this? I don't remember, maybe they did explain it. Anyway. We're talking to the novelty dice maker over here. And, um, I was asking, was I asking about the building? Because I think, I think I was. I have more questions about this building. Yes, yes, I was. Good, good, good. I'm listening. She says, there used to be a hair salon here, right? Yes, I think it was called Androgynous Orlando or something similar. They weren't a big hit all around here. Turns out that working class men don't like genderless haircuts. They're scared of the word. Uh, what's wrong with a bit of experimenting? The customer should be, should have been more open-minded. I guess it just wasn't the time yet. She tucks a strand of hair under the headscarf. She does have a hair scarf, doesn't she? Hmm. Oh yeah, what what happened to the gym? It wasn't merely a gym, it was Artemi Tep's Boxing Club, a community project created to steer at-risk youths away from the drugs and crime. Uh <laughs> maybe that's what Kuno needs, a community-centric boxing club. Hmm, Kuno, her eyes narrow in the dim light. Who's Kuno? Uh, well, he's the little gremlin, or ginger gremlin specifically, who likes to defile dead bodies. Oh, yes. You mean the kid with a s sailor's mouth? Yes, I've heard him yelling profanities in the backyard. She looks out the window. It's oddly quiet there at the moment. I think it will take more than a gym to help that kid, she says. Uh, yeah. It <laughs> it's a little bit of a... It takes a village. Although I'm not really sure about the intricacies of that particular saying, the whole it takes a village to raise a kid or raise a person. I don't remember. I don't know how it goes. Who was Artemitep? A kind man from Ziemsk, she says. Or Shemsk, maybe? Um, I heard he was, or he had some trouble with the law when he was younger, and that's why he wanted to start the gym as his way of giving back. How did that community project work out? It didn't. If anything, it made the youth situation in Martinez even worse. At some point, someone started a rumor that the punching bag downstairs was full of amphetamines. It's not really full of that, says our logic. No one would store their drugs like that. Eventually, the coalition took away the funding and the club went bankrupt. This was a few years ago. It's gotten much more peaceful around the plaza ever since. What's up with the broken windows? Oh, this one's a mess, she sighs. There used to be a company that promised to repair Windows 24 hours a day. Oh? You mean there isn't? Because we know of a window that has been recently patched. Like, very recently patched. Hmm. What could go wrong with this one, right? Uh, then again, it's it's not within 24 hours. It's 24 hours a day, which is a different thing. Yeah, I suppose. Um, she says, Turns out the business was actually set up as a front for an illicit group that was producing snuff milios, who would have guessed. And they never cleaned up the debris either. Now it's just littering the hallway, and I have no idea how to get rid of it on my own. Uh, what? Okay, cool, very cool about the debris. But what's the snuff milio? It's a Sub Rosa radio station that broadcasts real murders, like real victims. Some people pay good money to get... Oh, it's... Uh, yeah, interesting. Um, so it's snuff videos, except <laughs> it's not videos, it's, it's a radio station. Um, yeah, I guess I, I should have guessed from snuff. I was trying to figure out where I knew that word from. Um... The only place that I've seen it at was in Vampire Bloodlines. There's a couple of lines where they refer to a specific tape in that game um, about as a snuff video or snuff, snuff tape. Uh, some people pay good money to get off on it. 
Nothing changes in her tone as she says that, says Drama, as if it's just another piece of information to lay out for the world. Yeah, she's pretty detached on a lot of stuff, so I don't think I can read too much into that. Kim says, don't worry. The ICP has a separate division that deals exclusively with unlicensed sub-Rosas. The lieutenant turns to you. This isn't, this isn't our problem. Good luck with that, she says. It's not easy catching those perpetrators. And then she lets the thought go. Um, did someone ma uh, here make stuffed animals? I saw mounts lying around. You, uh, probably piles is the better word, but still. Mm, you might... Is that, an act, is that how people say? Like, mounts of... That sounds so weird. Because <laughs> the common one is piles of stuffed animals. You don't say mounts of stuffed animals. Also because a mount can be a pile, or can be a mountain, but... It, most likely, it's actually just going to be, like, something that you mount. You mean Mr. Fabron, the taxidermist, she says. No, he mostly just did drugs. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, I found creepy mannequins. There used to be a fashion atelier here, but I have forgotten the head designer's name. They were doing well for a couple of years until the insect rights activists came. The insect rights activists? What? The name of... Um... The Atelier produced a certain collection that used chitin among the materials. Apparently, chitin is made in the Occident, where it's extracted from beetle wings. And you know how all kinds of political movements are big in the Occident. The activists shut down the biggest chitin suppliers, which, of course, caused the price to skyrocket. And naturally, all the most fashionable taste makers refused to be seen in chitin from then on. The atelier went bankrupt before they could finish the collection. I do wonder how chitin is made, if it is an uh, industrial chitin would, chitin would be here. If you don't know what chitin is, um, I think, I, I don't know if it's taught in everywhere um, like that. I remember when I was a kid learning about insects in like grade one or grade two. Um, and uh, le specifically lear learning the word kitina, which is our Portuguese word for um, chitin, and uh, how it's uh, the thing that surrounds insects. And uh, I don't remember if that's when I learned about uh, how insects don't get very big, because, ex excuse the hiccup, uh, because the uh, specifically the, the way chitin works is that if they were very big, then they would be, be too heavy for their own um, strength. It doesn't, like, it, it doesn't scale very well, for, like that whole exoskeleton situation that insects have. And uh, the chitin is just their skin. Uh, uh, the skin of an insect is, is crunchy. I, well, if you crunch an insect, the skin of an <laughs> insect is crunchy. Um, but uh, that that's, that's the chitin breaking. Um, it's not made... Like, it's not, for example, like the turtle, the shell of a turtle, which is made out of, um, well, it's basically skin cells, uh, but it's basically akin to our own fingernails, or the horn of a rhinoceros, for example, which is also skin cells. Uh, no, actually, the horn of a is it just hair? Either way, uh, the point is, there's different types of hard shells in different animals and chitin is specifically in insects the problem is can you just mush it up into a pulp and just spread it into a paste and make it look like things because uh, these things were made out of um taxidermist uh doing well oh the designer right 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 because yeah i don't know you could just have the shells of the beetles because they, they probably would be big um, and beetles, uh, I don't actually know how beetles work in terms of reproduction and all that sort of stuff. I know they get big if you feed them well, but, um, eh, anyway. <laughs> the insects didn't have any brains or feelings. It, it's, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's fair, I suppose it's a fair criticism of the criticism here, in the sense that you're, you're, you're raising, uh, it's, it's probably... I guess, I guess you could say relatively valid point, uh, although if you disagree with that, it's kind of hard to prove. Uh, also, the insects do have brains, by the way. But either way, the, the feelings bit is probably where it comes from. Sentience uh, being a, usually a, a relevant part of uh, animal rights. And, the re and one of the reasons why animal rights are, are worthwhile in the first place is because they, they are sentient and they know what's up. 
Um, but more to the point, perhaps it's assuming that these, which is a thing that happens actually, that these, um, uh, what are they called? They were specifically uh, activists, but yeah, but extracted from beetle wings. Apparently, cat and made. Oh yeah, insect rights activists. That's the one. Uh, yeah, well, I guess. Yeah, I was gonna say this is assuming that they're fighting for uh, the rights of insects because they're they're sentient or because they have feelings, but it probably is implied there. It's really weird that it isn't animal rights activism. It's it's insect rights activism. Um, but um, but the thing is, you know, defending insects and the health and well-being of insects is a very important environmental act uh, because insects are a tremendously important as uh, aspect of all our, our, our whole ecosystem. Um, but also their indicators about other things. And it's just, it's, you know... Sometimes, like, if you say the bees are dying, you might not care about the bees dying. You could, you could, you might say the bees are dying and be worried about it, um, and still be okay. Well, screw the bees, nobody cares. But the problem with, with the bees dying, um, uh, among other problems, it, it's the fact that it's an indicator as well of air pollution and a bunch of other stuff. Um, so the, you know, it's like you point to the, the, not so much the root of a problem. But you point to the, the the result of a problem and just be like, look at the bees dying. That's a problem because something is causing it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's um, I suppose insects would be like that. But um, I'm glad someone took care of the little guys. I like insects. And insects are really cool as well. They're, I mean, I say that because they are in, in my, I, the reason why I think insects are cool is because of the chitin. Half, half, half of it is. Uh, but also because there's so many of them. It's unbelievable, the the, vari the variety. It's just incredible. So studying insects is just... It, as Of all the people that I have heard talk, who study insects, that I've heard talking about why they cho chose to study insects, it, 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 it usually goes around or revolves around the fact that there's so many of them. It's just so... Uh, and there's also so many of them that have not been found. Uh, so that, is, that novelty aspect is a... Uh, in my... Not experience, but in my vicarious experience, I suppose we could say, put it like that. Uh, it is a big factor for people to like insects. And she says, or like studying insects specifically. Really? She looks at the windowsill where a, a dead fly is lying on its back, legs curled up in a bow tie. Anyway, poor guy, she says. Suddenly you get a feeling that insects are important to the case somehow. It's hard to say why. Thank you, empathy. Um... Insects are important to the case. Could that be the locusts? I should check on the fridge. I don't think I think the I don't think the body is there anymore, but then again, maybe it is. Um There was a terrifying taxidermid bear in the cellar. Oh boy, the fabled Revachol Ice City. You're in for a treat here. She smiles and leans closer, hands on her knees like a stand-up comedian ready to tell a story. Uh, is that how stand-up... Hiccups, I'm very sorry. Is that how stand-up chameleons, chameleons? chameleons tell a story? She says, The place was owned by two guys who had some rather innovative ideas about marketing. The bear was one of them. Now ask me about their other ideas. Okay, well, what about the other ideas? There was really just one, and it involved picking out the prettiest girls in the neighborhood and paying them 20 cents per hour to man the booth. You're really going to use the word, the, the verb, to man <laughs> the booth when it's specifically women? Also, you probably should use just staff or crew the booth, because that's gender neutral. But in, specifically in here, I suppose you should say to woman the booth, because our girl the booth. Anyway. And by men, oh, ah, I thought she was gonna, she was gonna be self-aware there, but I think this might be a translation issue because this word "two man" something is a uh, does like for example in Portuguese we don't have anything similar to that. Um, we just uh, the word we use is um, attend to something similar to maybe attend to the booth or or maybe work at the booth. We 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 don't have a verb that's derived from um, man. Um, which is what the the verb to man means, um, but um, 
so it might be that in, in Latvian this doesn't work and the translator just didn't, well, didn't see a different way of saying that when really it should have been to staff the booth. And uh, and just generally, this is just this sort of gender language sort of just creates uh, awkward <laughs> situations. And by men the booth, she says, I mean slump behind the counter with a face that could maim you if you ever dare to disturb their bored magazine browsing or their, yeah, their bored magazine policy. She leans back and disapproving. Yeah, if you're not going to pay the people who work for you, then big surprise. It sounds like she really didn't like those girls. Oh, I... Yeah, I was going to say, at first I thought I, I didn't... I didn't... Yeah. If, if you remove this word over here, uh, the whole thing sounds like she might have been a girl, one of those girls as well. Uh, but then she adds the board, which means that... Um, anyway... It's it, it's it's sort of telling that she she blames the girls for the situation rather than the people who are playing them 20 cents an hour or paying them 20 cents an hour. Frito does the same thing, says our reaction speed. Uh, oh, that's a good call, actually. I know a girl just like that. She works in Frita as a um, cashier, and she's not particularly friendly. That's not true. She's super nice. What? Can I say that I know a girl like that and... Uh, her boss is just as scummy? Seriously, she's super nice. I mean, you know, she wasn't... It's not like she did anything to me that I would... Or t said anything to me specifically that I would say that she's nice about, but... Whatever, it's... What, are we supposed to not... Is she supposed to come across as not nice? What the heck? Oh, boy. Um, what did they expect? 20 cents per hour is dog's pay. I'm surprised they showed up w to work at all. Oh, but they did, says... She says. They did show up to work. And not alone. They were all acne-ridden. What? <laughs> they... I mean... It's... It's... It's a th how that works. There were... There were... She says. There were also acne-ridden girlfriends and gorilla-like boyfriends loitering near the ice cream stand. Oh, right. And they already had the bear... She closes her eyes as if remembering something painful. What about the bear? The bear, she repeats, pressing thumbs into her temples, like trying to suppress a headache. It didn't work out. Of course not. The bear was terrifying. No one wants ice cream guarded by a hostile apex predator. The... It... It, it is. It is an apex predator. Now that I think about it. Bears are... A lot of bears are, don't don't hunt other animals, but um, as far as I know, I think there's a lot of them that are herbivore, um, or whose diet mostly consi consists of uh, vegetables. <laughs> vegetables? That's not the word. What's the word? Yeah, it is vegetables. Yeah, that's the the way I think about because there's a distinction between vegetables and um, uh, what's the other? Oh, legum legumins legumes. Hmm, because, you know, everything that is green is a vegetable, because that's where the word vegetarian comes from. Uh, herbivore comes from the word herb, um, which is more related to specific types of plants, um, like grass and, and, and herbs. But, of course, th that's a little bit more... You can just sort of dismiss herbivore as being a weirdly restrictive uh, term and just made up very, very many, many years ago and just don't think about it too much. But for vegetarian, it's a little bit more recent uh, and it specifically talks about human um, f uh, diet rather than animals, obviously. But the way I remember veg uh, vegetables to mean anything that is green is thinking of vegetarian because that's, you know... And I say green, but that's also loosely... That's not, like... Corn is still a vegetable, and it's not green. I mean, it is green when it's green, <laughs> but then it yellows, of course. Uh, but that's what happens to every plant, by the way. Plants are not green forever. Every single plant can turn red, or a shade of red, because of death. Um, anyway, no one wants ice cream. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, wait, this part of the hostile apex predator. To make matters worse, she says, the fridge didn't work too well either, and half the ice cream came out malformed and partially melted. Eventually, Ravachol Ice City lost a price war to its rival, Glace 5000, uh, which is... It's... Glace 5000, that is a very specific name. That reminds me of Nestle. Nestle being a, a worldwide f seller of uh, uh, ice cream. 
as well. And also being scummy. So maybe that was the... Uh, um, I say scummy, but evil is the correct term. Uh, at Nestle, I'm talking about Nestle. Uh, Glace might have been a reference to that and sort of priming us for thinking of it as evil as well. I don't know. Glace 5000 sold caramel, caramel sundaes for only five cents a piece out of regular fr fridges. Okay, maybe it isn't Nestle. Um... <laughs> it's the market doing its job. Yes, that's why Nestle is the... Uh, well, it's not why Nestle is evil, but it is the reason why Nestle is big. Because it's evil. Uh, I'm sure the bear was doing its best. Let's go with that. Maybe, she says, because the taxidermist who made that bear definitely wasn't doing his best, I mean. How come? Also, the bear is a taxidermied bear? My god. I thought it was plastic. Because that, you, you know, or made out of foam or there's so many other ways of making a bear like that. She says, he said that the bear was, was his vision beast. He said he met his vision beast, beast while high on desiccants. He called it Megatherion. I don't know what desiccants is, but it feels to me like it's the thing you use to dry things. Maybe alcohol based. Our electric chemistry failed over there. Why is everyone doing drugs in this place? Even the taxidermist? <laughs> Let's ask about the Megatherian. Megatherian, she nods. A mega wild beast. Uh, what's a mega wild beast? It's an imaginary beast that guides you through life. By telling you to do more drugs, mostly. I don't do drugs. Very good. You shouldn't do them. She nods. Or she, Yeah, you're a police officer, after all. Anyway, now you know the story of the fallen ice cream empire. She seems almost sad finishing the story. Some dust beams swirl in the afternoon air. Her eyes follow it idly. Little sparkling embers under the window. Anything else? She says. Another failed business, perhaps? I've been here for a long time. Yeah, I found the building's intercom, but it's, it's not working. Oh, right. She rubs her forehead. Her scarf has left a faint line on her dusky skin. I hope you didn't try to ring me. I think none of those doorbells work, including mine. I'm still in the middle of connecting the wires. Sorry about the confusion. The doorbell with the empty name card must belong to her, then. Uh, says our logic. Yeah, so you're telling me that the doorbell with the empty name card was yours? That's right. I haven't even written my name there. As I said, it's quite useless useless right now. It doesn't work yet. Uh, I was wondering about the whirling in rags. Is there, is it part of the same building complex as this? You could say so. Both houses were built at the same time and under the East Delta Commerce Center project. That explains why you can call the whirling from the intercom, albeit I doubt that anyone responds. If the whirling is part of the same building, then it's what I was thinking, Inland Empire, maybe. Then it's part of the doomed commercial area. The darkness of this place is there, too. No, that's not what I was thinking. I was thinking specifically about that door that I can't open. Uh, a strange thing happened when I tried calling a company called Slipstream SCA. Someone answered. The novelty dice maker looks like she doesn't really believe you. It can't, it can't be true, she says. They don't work here anymore. They've been gone for years. Are you sure it was Slipstream SCA? Was it a woman? Maybe it was a plaisance from the bookstore. Um, she said she was from uh, tri Tricentennial Electronics. Or Electrics. Tricentennial Electrics? There's a moment before she recognizes the name. It used to be a major electric company 100 years ago. Are you sure it wasn't just some kids playing a prank on you? No, it was something else. It was eerie, says our Inland Empire. Yeah, it was the wax uh, thing. That was one of the first interactions we had with the, in the game as well. A hundred something episodes after, here we are. It was too real to be just a prank. Either we're dealing with a professional actress or, says our drama. It may have been some sort of rare electrical anomaly. A prank is more likely, no? <laughs> says the novelty dice maker. The kids these days, she shakes her head. We were just one of them and now they're terrorizing us. No solidarity. That's not how solidarity works. You can't... <laughs> it's like a... I don't know. It's like a, a prison inmate being becoming a prison guard and then the, the, the prison inmates being sort of suspicious of the prison guard that was a prison inmate and be like, ah, no solidarity. I used to be one of yous. Anyway, I... It's, you know what I mean? Or like a... 
a worker becoming a cop or something. You just don't. Uh, I have a few... Well, I guess... Don't. I have a few more questions about the building. But I don't actually do... Interesting that it stays marked. Uh, but that's because... Yeah, there's there's reasons. There's It's the, the thing. But we're out of time for the day, so uh, we're going to continue talking to her in the next episode. We didn't spend that much time. I like that. We did also gain a bunch of experience, which I like that uh, as well. So uh, for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Disco Elysium. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment. Like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.